Big week for Townsville this week with thousands of new soldiers joining our fair city and also the US Navy in conjunction with the Australian Navy are in town visiting the port and a very special visit to JCU. They came along with biodiesel on their mind and that's exactly what they were there to talk about. Before we get too much further into this though, how about some biodiesel 101 from Associate Professor Kristen Heinemann who's the uh, number one person in the north when it comes to biodiesel. Let's have a listen and see what it's all about. So I've worked with Mike Rogie for a long time and now I've established the North Queensland Ergal Identification Culturing Facility which was the first research, tropical research facility for Mike Rogie in the world and it was funded in 2004 through the Australian Research Council. We have established more than 300 microalgal strains, freshwater and marine, and have ensured that these can be grown on nutrient-rich effluent waters, as well as under enriched carbon dioxide. And in addition to that, we have biochemically profiled the culture collection, so we know precisely uh, how tolerant they are to environmental stresses, such as temperature and light, and also flugas from coal-fired power stations, and we can, by their chem chemical profile, say they are suitable for which end product. So, for example, we can say the strains we're culturing currently are suitable for bi traditional biodiesel using traditional extraction techniques. And for North Queensland, what does, uh, what does such a, a coup like this mean for the economy up here and also for MBD's um, business in North Queensland? Yes, I think one sentence would uh, sum it up. Microalgal biomass can produce fuel, feed, food, uh, nutraceuticals and pharmaceuticals like antioxidants and omega-3 fish oil replacement for human consumption and therefore it has a great market potential for regional Australia in general. And of course what you're feeding the, uh, feeding the algal as well it comes from, uh, from just basically waste product, doesn't it? Yes, we are using waste gases like flue gas containing CO2 and NOx and we're using wastewater high in nutrients. So like plants, microalgae behave like plants, they fix carbon dioxide, but they need nutrients, like plants need fertilizing, so they need an N source, a nitrogen source, and a phosphate source. What would you see some of the bulk sources for the, uh, for the algal food coming from in North Queensland? Aquaculture industries are typically high in um, high nutrient effluent wastewater that they cannot discharge, and therefore they need to recycle that water and clean it up. The algae offer a sustainable product at the end of it and in the meantime clean up the problem area. Representatives from both uh, navies, the Australian and the US Navy, were keen to get amongst the algae. But before we do that, we had a chat to Professor Rocky Denise, who's JCU's representative on site and also part of the MBD project, to explain to us just a little bit what this visit means for North Queensland and also for JCU and MBD. But the US Navy are visiting today, along with the Australian Navy as well. They have the goal of developing fuels that are environmentally sustainable to operate their major shipping. So these are the aircraft carriers, the destroyers, the submarines, and, and the aircraft that go on these carriers using sustainable fuel. And what sort of capacity are they likely to be looking at, do you think? Millions of barrels over time. So they have a goal for 2020 to have 50% of their fuel needs being met by renewable fuels. And there was talk of a tour of uh, US Navy craft uh, to celebrate or to uh, actually try out the, uh, the green fuel around the Pacific? Uh, that's true. So this year the US Navy will have an, an initial um, sailing of a fleet from Hawaii using renewable fuels as a blend with the goal of uh, having a great green fleet sailing around the world using renewable fuels in the future. MBD and their partnership with JCU get quite a few high profile visitors from all over the world visiting the plant right here in Townsville and of course uh, with all that being said it was time to get in there and get amongst it. And we had a chat to Chris Tyndall, who's the Director of Operational Energy with the uh, US Navy, and uh, he explained to us what it means to the US Navy to go green. Yes, uh, within the US Navy, we have some very aggressive goals for alternative energy. And in, uh, by 2020, we want to have 50% of our energy coming from alternative sources. And some of that would be alternative fuels. And so part of, the, uh, part of the reasoning for being here is that uh, actually in 2016 we want to have a great green fleet which we uh, hope to mimic the great white fleet from 1907 to 1909 and possibly be pulling into uh, Australia and maybe refueling with biofuels. So here at James Cook University, uh, MDB Energy has is, is got this great algal research uh, and development center 
that uh, we were basically coming out and seeing what the status is and what the process is and progress. And that's, uh, that's part of the reason why, why we're here. Uh, last week I was in Sydney and, and actually spoke at a conference down there on uh, sustainable fuels. And so uh, just to maximize the opportunity, I uh, also came up here to, to town as well too. And it, what's the potential, uh, I mean, what does it mean for the, I guess, the world in the future um, to have this sort of research happening? Well, it's, uh, it, for us, it's all about national security and energy security because, uh, you know, currently we're getting our fuels from, from places that, uh, and nations that may not have the same ideals that we have. So we're trying to avoid the price instability as well as the, uh, the availability of fuels uh, in the future. So that's uh, the main reason why we've been going on this path of uh, trying to do some research and development, and we're trying to also grow a domestic biofuels industry within the United States as well. Um, is it, uh, amongst the research you have been doing, is this one of the, the most promising sort of sites that you've seen? Uh, actually, uh, actually, it is. Uh, even within the United States, there are a couple of algal companies that, uh, that we've actually purchased some fuel from, and we've been doing some research and development with, from that perspective and testing and certifying our ships and our planes on, uh, on those types of fuels. Unfortunately, the representative from the Australian Navy wasn't authorised to speak on camera, but he did tell us off camera that the Australian Navy was going to follow very, very closely in the US Navy's footsteps to uh, start running the Australian Navy also on green fuel. This is Craig McDonald at JCU for Townsville News Online.